Okay, um, as you can see, Ed's had a, a slight incident there, digging himself in. Because of the situation, because it's actually uphill, because of the rocks around us, we're actually going to do a winch recovery. We're going to be using this worn 9.5 Ti. As you can see, we're starting off with a very nice, neatly layered on cable there. Um, the remote, I'm going to have Luke here helping me because he's got his gloves on. One of the most important safety features is gloves. I'm going to keep my hand away from the control completely while Luke has actually got uh, his hands anywhere near the winch. Now, if you have got a winch on the front of your vehicle and you do use it for off-roading, um, if you go to a play day or green lane, at the end of the day, I'd always recommend that you run it in and out to warm it up, to generate heat, to get away any condensation that's inside. It'll make sure that the winch keeps working all the time. Okay, so we've got the cable out of the way. I'm just going to push it forward now, just very gently, just to release the tension off. Now Luke can actually go in there and take the cable off again. I'm keeping my hands firmly away from the trigger. I'm just going to press forward while Luke pulls away. Now I'm going to slow down. Luke's going to take the pressure off and I'm going to put it into free spool. Now when we free spool, you walk constantly and continually, keeping the pressure onto it. Okay, Luke, off you go. Now, you've got to keep going very tight, keeping the cable tight. If you don't, if you stop, sometimes the overrun of the drum will let the cable all expand and all of a sudden you've got a bit of a bird's nest on there. It's not a problem, but it will be when we start to exert the pressures onto it and the cable tightens up and it starts to actually pull through. It could flat spot your cable. As you can see, we've positioned the vehicle in a straight line as far away from the recovered, from the vehicle needing to be recovered as we can. That ensures that we get as much cable off of the drum as possible. This winch is rated at 9.5 or nine and a half thousand pound feet pull. What you need to remember roughly is that for every layer of cable you've still got left on the drum, you lose around about a thousand pound feet of pull. So if you get close to your friend who's stuck really badly, there is a possibility that if you get to say like, two layers off, you've still got six layers on there. You're actually only using a two or three thousand pound winch. You need to get away as far as possible. There is another technique we can show you in a moment using the snatch block to double that up. As you can see, I'm sitting in the vehicle. I've got the engine running. I've got my foot on the foot brake and I've actually got my wheels turned on full left hand lock. All that helps increase the rolling resistance because obviously I'm facing down here on quite loose ground. Ed's coming out of quite a muddy, boggy hole. He weighs a lot, lot more than me. The resistance coupled up with the weight of that vehicle is probably double to me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a pulley block into the system, which is going to double the line pull of the winch. So theoretically, if we've got a 19 or 9,000 pound winch, we're going to double it up to 18,000 pound of pull. It's going to get more cable out, so if you're stri stuck for uh, distance, you're going to get a lot more cable out. It's going to half the pull on the actual battery, so it's going to half the battery power. It's also going to half the speed of the winch, making it a lot more controllable up a situation like this. First of all, we're going to put a tested shackle into place. Um, again, just give us the ability to put the pulley block in. So here we have the pulley block. We can clearly see this is how it's going to work in action. This is how we fit it on. Very simple, slide it into the groove here, into the small pulley wheel, sliding round, minding out with the fingers, again always wearing gloves, and then as simple as doubling the line, I'm now going to fasten it to the shackle, and again when I'm fastening the shackle I'm going to do it up as tight as I can, not over tight, and then I'm going to back it off a quarter of a turn, just so the shackle doesn't actually bind up or tighten itself when I'm taking the tension and uh, doing the actual winch. So there we go, I'm just going to back it off a small amount now. And now Darren's going to take the cable and clip it back onto the winch vehicle, which then will double the line load. So we need a little bit more cable out. In some situations it is better to keep the engine running and power the winch out and in. Again, it gets the usage of the winch. It also charges up the battery whilst that engine's running. So here we go, we're going to connect the uh, hook now to the vehicle. I'm going to see a slight problem here. This hook is actually going to be too big. 
it will not sit central giving us a nice straight line so potentially we could damage this mechanism possibly snap just here so what I'm going to do in this situation I'm actually going to bring in another shackle into this just so I can keep all my lines running nice and straight nice and true again here what my hook can do is centralize itself in here but ultimately the hook should be connected at the same straight line as the cable going into the drum now what I'm going to do is hook the hook from underneath and in this way then, and if anything fails down here, the hook should hopefully go into the ground, rather than, and I think you'll all agree, visually, if it breaks now, it could actually go airborne, potentially giving us a bigger, wider range of danger area. Here we have the Rugged Guide Wade and Winch Blanket. Many different blankets on the market, but again, this one stays on the front of your vehicle, and we can fit it around the hook end, which is the man-made end, and with the visual checks we've given this cable this morning, this is the only bit I can actually say that could fail. So I'm going to fasten that there. This should hopefully now bring the cable to the ground, stopping it from going airborne also. Right, here we go. What we're going to do now is tension the cable. The cable must always be tight on the drum, otherwise potentially it's going to overlap, start to damage the cable. So Luke is roughly his own body length away from the winch, so if anything happens, he's a good safe distance away, because these winches do generate electric motive force, which is just like a household drill. When you let go of the drill button, it keeps on spinning away, the same as our electric winch. So here we go. What we're going to do now is start the vehicle to start charging the engine. And we're just going to take the cable in just a small blip, stop, blip, stop. Very controlled. Luke's going to stand up and hold it as if he's trying to cry, climb down a rope. And he's going to feed it in hand over hand. We haven't got a lot of tension to take up here. OK, so we're going to go to hand signals. And this is a winch in and a little bit. Brilliant, nice tension. So here we haven't quite uh, load lined the cable or spooled it on correctly. We've got a small gap in the middle which will allow the next run of cables across the top to drop down, potentially damaging steel cable or even plasma style cable. So Luke's going to hold the cable out and we're going to winch out a little bit. Keeping a lot of tension on this part here. And that's enough. Okay, Luke's now going to try and spool it on so it's running next to each line. Just come to me a little bit, Luke. That's it. Good. And nice and gently, we're going to flip in. A bit too quick there. And one more. And one more. And one more. And one more. Ultimately, the winch drum should look like a piece of wire you've bought, a stereo wire going around a small cotton wheel. Looking good here now. I'm happy we're ready to winch. So here we go for demonstration reasons. We've kept winching in a bad situation, thus at the wrong angle. So we can see here the cable's built up on the right hand side of the drum here. We've got massive gaps here. And I could feel this whilst being winched up. I could feel the car banging as the cable was dropping off. This will seriously damage your cable or even your rope, potentially breaking and then you're barreling back down the hill. So this is the same winch, we've changed the line of the winch vehicle making the overall winch a lot straighter and we can clearly see after that winch the cable's looking as good as it was before we took it out. So what we're going to do now is actually use the winch to lower the vehicle down this very sharp steep step behind me. Very controlled situation, it's going to stop the suspension from compressing on the car, potentially stopping me damaging chassis, axle components or even suspension.